Hi everyone, I'm Nathan Nichols from the University of Vermont. I'm here to talk to you about our approach to the analytic continuation pro problem where we use a parameter-free genetic algorithm for estimating the dynamic structure factor at zero and finite temperature. So let's get right into it. So let me just start by describing the problem where we have some spectral function under some appropriate kernel. If we integrate over the frequency space, we're able to get an imaginary times Green's function. That's it, right? We have the function right there and we're good to go. But wait a minute, no. We want to do the analytic continuation, right? We want to go in the other direction. We have the Green's function in imaginary time and we want the spectral function as a function of a real space frequency. So um, how, how could uh, we approach this problem? Well, one simple approach would be to discretize the, the integral and then do some linear algebra to uh, achieve uh, the spectral function. But this approach doesn't really work in practice. Um, I'm gonna kind of illustrate an example to kind of show why. Um, so these, this inversion uh, under these, these kernels is an ill-conditioned uh, problem. As you can see, we have uh, two imaginary times Green's functions here, the blue dashed and the orange solid. And if we look at the spectral function for the blue dash, uh, we see it looks like this. And if we look at the spectral function for the orange solid, it looks like this. And you can see that these are drastically different uh, spectral functions where we have shifts in the peak locations and different size uh, for peak intensities and different widths. Also, um, you can notice that the imaginary times Green's functions aren't very different. Uh, they're within uh, typical quantum Monte Carlo est error estimates. So uh, what are we supposed to do uh, as a Quantum Monte Carlo researchers, do we need to run our algorithms forever in order to shrink those error bars down to basically nothing? Uh, well, we don't have to do that. Some algorithms have been developed already. And uh, so I'm gonna discuss kind of the, the standard method that people use, uh, which is maximum entropy method, uh, a little bit about kind of the state of the art, uh, this VSOM method, and then uh, the way that we're approaching the problem using differential evolution. So maximum entropy method uses Bayesian inference um, where we have to maximize uh, two terms in, in the Bayes rule, um, where we want to get the most likely spectral function given uh, some imaginary times Green's function. Uh, I say two because uh, the, the uh, probability that depends on the Green's function is, is constant. So the two terms that we need to maximize are the likelihood and the prior probability. If we look a little bit closer at these, we can see the likelihood is proportional to some chi-squared term uh, that's negative uh, with a factor of two in there. Uh, in order to calculate this, we need to get a Green's function from some proposed spectral function and just do the, the integral that we saw before. And then we take chi-squared difference of that uh, proposed Green's function compared to the quantum Monte Carlo data Green's function. And uh, the prior probability, on the other hand, is uh, proportional to some exponential of uh, entropy-like term that's scaled by this regularization constant alpha. And this entropy-like term has this, this uh, d omega that you see in, in the function. That's some uh, default spectrum that, that comes from some prior knowledge that we have of what the spectrum might look like. And it tries to match the spectra to this default model. Um, so by modifying this alpha term, the regularization constant, we're able to um, make the spectra closer to that default model. And this is maximum entropy in a nutshell. We just got to maximize this function and uh, the spectra we get out of it is the most likely candidate according to this method. On to the state of the art. This is uh, the so-called fast and efficient stochastic optimization method, FISOM, uh, pioneered by Thomas Meyer's group. Uh, so their approach is um, they have basically no knowledge of the prior probability. So they're only maximizing the likelihood. Uh, it's the same likelihood that we saw before. So I'm going to discuss a little bit about the algorithm itself. So the, the, um, basically the while wow loop inside the algorithm uh, goes like this. So we have some spectra. We calculate the chi-squared. Then we propose some update to that spectra. Uh, by adding some random noise. Now the random noise uh, can be correlated. Uh, it doesn't have to be though. And then we calculate the chi-squared on that new spectra. And then if that chi-squared on the new spectra is less than the chi-squared of the old spectra, we move on to the next iteration, keeping the proposed spectra. Otherwise, we keep the old spectra. And then we iterate. 
So what does this look like visually? Okay, so we have some spectral function here. We calculate the Green's function. Then we get some chi-squared difference. We got 5.53 here. We add some random noise to it. It's looking pretty hairy there. We uh, calculate the Green's function. And then we get some chi-squared difference. Here we have 5.25. Oh, that's less than what we had before. So we keep this in the next iteration. So that's PSOM in a nutshell. Um, On to our approach which is the uh, differential evolution for analytic continuation. So our approach was heavily inspired by the GIFT algorithm, uh, another genetic algorithm. Um, so ours is an evolutionary algorithm with a, similar to GIFT with a population of individuals whose genome is made up of the spectral weights at specific frequencies. And all these methods, you, you partition the, the frequency space in some appropriate way. And then each uh, you do some mutations on the individuals in the population uh, in differential evolution. You do vector differences, which I'll explain in a moment. And then you have some way to, to rate the fitness of the individuals in the population. You can simply use the chi-squared uh, like we, we had before, or we can uh, include the moments of integration as well if, if, uh, if we know those. Uh, some situations, you know those exactly. And then there's a rejection step where we only keep the most fit individuals in the next generation. And then we make a whole new population using mutations and get the fitness and we go over and over again until we reach some appropriate fitness. So what does this look like? So here we have some population of individuals over an extremely coarse frequency, uh, coarse grain frequency space. Uh, we have five here. We've got the blue, the red, the green, the orange, and the purple. And uh, say we wanted to propose a a new individual in the next generation. Um, so first we got to choose a parent, let's choose the blue, and then we choose three individuals randomly from the rest of the population. So we'll choose the green, the red, and the purple. Now let's just focus on a, mutating a single gene in this population. So we've got a single gene, we grab a random number and we see if it's less than some, some constant that's the crossover rate, and if it is, then we, we take the difference between the red gene and the purple gene then we scale that by some factor that's the, the uh, differential weight. And then we add the gene from the green guy. So this, um, this effectively mutates uh, the, the next gene in the, in the next um, population. And if we didn't get the, um, the, uh, the random number, we, um, we keep the gene from the old individual. So now we got this new individual. We do that for all the genes in, in that individual. And then we check the fitness. And if the, check, the fitness is lower, then we keep that individual. And then we do this for every individual in the population uh, where we're grabbing um, random individuals from the current population, not the proposed next population. And then um, the next generation just gets fitter and fitter and fitter. Um, so you're probably asking yourself, well, what's this F? What are those Cs? I thought you promised the parameter-free method. Well, we could take those and we could sweep those right into the genome. And this is what's known as uh, self-adaptive differential evolution, pioneered by Kin and Sugathan. And um, so now we have a parameter-free method in order to, to achieve um, these spectral functions. So now we've uh, gone over these, uh, these three methods, kind of the standard model, the state of the art, and our new method. How do they compare? Well, first, uh, let's take a look at two Gaussians uh, at finite temperature. So the, uh, the dashed line in red is the, the exact solution. And you can see that the maximum entropy solution uh, didn't work out so well. Um, the FESOM method kind of got the first peak, but the second peak is kind of spread out. And the differential evolution was able to match both peaks uh, pretty well. You can see the um, their orders of magnitude difference in the chi-squared difference between these spectrums and the exact spectrum. Now, what about a more complex spectrum? Well, here's a more complex spectrum. It's kind of difficult to see. I probably shouldn't have done the exact in the red dash, but uh, you can see it's really complicated. And you can see all three methods kind of fail about equally at this. Um, they're all within the same order of magnitude of each other in terms of chi-square. What about real quantum Monte Carlo data? This is for simulated quantum Monte Carlo data for the other two. Well, here I'm showing you the, the red dashed line is um, for, for experimental data for bulk helium at uh, 1.2 Kelvin. And these, um, the, um, we collected some quantum Monte Carlo data for bulk helium as well and ran these methods on those. As you can see, uh, differential evolution, the DEEK method, 
uh, and maximum entropy, max n, uh, both picked out this, this peak uh, about the same intensity in the same location. And, um, but you also notice that Deke also picked out another peak uh, around 40. Uh, Thesom, on the other hand, um, they got the peak in the same location, but it was a little more spread out. And um, it's kind of hard to tell, but it kind of picks up a little bit of intensity uh, later on. Um, but those are the three methods in a nutshell and the results. So uh, for future work, uh, we're planning on using this new uh, differential evolution method on new quantum Monte Carlo data that we're collecting right now uh, for some other projects that we're working on. Also planning on porting our code to the GPU. And our code's available now on the Del Maestro Group uh, GitHub page, as well as uh, my personal GitHub page. So you can go there and check it out. We've got more test cases and timings and, and uh, more to come that goes in active development. Thank you for your time.